consider the following example. We want to find and classify any stationary points for the following surface. Now this is a z as a function of x and y, meaning we're dealing with a three-dimensional surface. And any stationary points of this surface are going to satisfy day z, day x equals zero, and day z, day y equal to zero. So let's start off by working out each of these partial derivatives. And day z, day x equals zero will imply, now day z, day x here is going to be 2x, plus 3y plus 6. Remembering that we're treating y as a constant here when we work out the partial derivative of z with respect to x and hence terms such as 3y squared and 3y are treated as constant and just differentiate to 0 here. So day z day x equals 0 implies 2x plus 3y plus 6 equals 0 which we could rearrange put the 6 on the right hand side by subtracting 6 from both sides to get 2x plus 3y equals negative 6. And we'll call that equation 1 and come back to solve that for x and y shortly. Similarly, let's work out what happens if day z day y is equal to 0. And in this case, treating x as a constant when we work out day z day y, that is going to give us x squared term will differentiate to 0, 3xy that will become 3x, 3y squared will differentiate to 6y, 6x will go to 0, 3y will differentiate to 3 and a constant of 60 differentiates to 0. Hence day z day y equals 0 implies 3x plus 6y plus 3 is equal to 0. Or rearranging that, 3x plus 6y is equal to negative 3, which we'll call equation 2. And so we now need to solve these two simultaneous equations for x and y to get the x and y coordinates of our stationary point. A number of ways we could do this. One method would be elimination. If we did equation 1, for instance, multiplied by 2, and then subtracted off equation 2, that would then eliminate y and allow us to find x initially for instance. So that would become two lots of 2x plus 3y on the left hand side minus 3x plus 6y is equal to two lots of the right hand side of equation one which is two times negative six minus the right hand side of equation two which is minus negative and that then becomes 4x plus 6y minus 3x minus 6y equal to negative 12 plus 3. And that eliminates y, as we said before, leaving us with x equals negative 9. So that is the x-coordinate of our stationary point. And we could then substitute that into equation, either equation really here, let's just substitute that into equation 2 which gives us 3 times negative 9 plus 6y is equal to negative 3. Then rearranging that, that becomes negative 27 plus 6y is negative 3. So adding 27 to both sides, 6y is equal to negative 3 plus 27, which will just be 24. And therefore, we find that in this case, y is equal to 4. So therefore, we now know our stationary point has x coordinate negative 9, y coordinate. So to find the z coordinate of our stationary point would be a matter of substituting both of these back into our initial equation for z. And if you do that, you can verify that z coordinate of the point actually becomes 39. So therefore, the stationary point has coordinates negative 9 for 39. Now we need to classify this stationary point and it will either be a local minimum, a local maximum or a saddle point. And we saw before that day z day x was 2x plus 3y plus 6. Now to classify the stationary point we need to first of all see whether the second derivative of z with respect to x, the second order partial derivative is positive or negative. So here day squared z day x squared 
when we differentiate this again, partially with respect to x, that's going to be 2, as again the y is being treated as constant here, and we'll just differentiate to 0. So it's worth noting at this stage that that is greater than 0. We also need to calculate the second order partial derivative day squared z day y squared, which will be 6. And we also need to work out the partial derivative day squared z day x day y, which is partially differentiating day z day y with respect to x. And so since day z day y was 3x plus 6y plus 3, partially differentiating that with respect to x will give us 3. And the reason we work these out is we then work out a quantity which is often called g to help us classify our stationary point. And g is day squared z day x squared times day squared z day y squared minus day squared z day x day y all squared. And so let's work that out here. So substituting in our partial derivatives, in this case g therefore is going to be 2 times 6 minus day squared z day x day y all squared, so that's minus 3 squared, so that's just g equals 12 minus 9 is 3, which you'll notice is also greater than 0. So looking at our stationary point, if g had been negative, it would have been a saddle point. But because g is positive, this is either a local maximum or a local minimum of the surface. And we saw that our second order derivative of partial derivative of z with respect to x was positive. And that means that this point, in fact, was a local minimum. That is, in this case, our surface has a minimum at the point negative 9, 4, 39. So that is an example of how we can find a stationary point for a three-dimensional surface.